Hi, and welcome to my alternative reality. This week we'll be looking at extreme performance art and the gothic underground. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the trip. Some people say goths are a pack of morbid assholes. I disagree. Lady Erica went along to one of their nocturnal gatherings and found out that they can indeed partay. Check it out. Hello, good evening and welcome. My name is Lady Erica, reporting for Maha's Alternative Reality. Now tonight, we're gonna to take a bit of a mission into gothic subculture here in Melbourne. Now, what's a goth and what's gothic? Initially, I did think of architecture, I thought of literature, I thought of fashion, and I thought of music. So in terms of art and literature, maybe authors like Edgar Allan Poe, um, H.G. Lovecraft, and more, more recently, writers like Anne Rice. In terms of music, I thought of bands like Joy Division, The Cure, The Damned, Sisters of Mercy, and Susie and the Banishees. And in fashion, I thought black. I'm wearing black tonight. Hopefully I'll be, I'll be able to fit in with everybody else. But of course things like black eyeliner, black nails, amazing crazy hair, and really anything goes, and all in a very gorgeous period style. So come with me tonight to the fantastic and long-running Cabaret Nocturne to check out Melbourne's Gothic style. So how long have you been coming to Cabaret Nocturne? Actually, first time, but Jules has been here before. <laughs> okay, and, and, and so what, what is it about the night that, that made you want to come tonight? We're, we're like 38, we're all 38 years old, so yeah, we were original goths before they were emos. Yeah. <laughs> and so what were you into back in the day? Oh, uh, The Cure, um, Sisters of Mercy, but you know. I'm here with a very horny lady called Charlotte, also known as Miss Twisted. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm having a fantastic time here tonight. Good to hear. This, this is the first time we've been here. Oh, yeah? And so how many times are you a regular here or do yeah. you come here often, um, as they say? I come here pretty much every month that it's on, without fail. Now I understand that you're actually the Victorian finalist for Miss Alternative. Yeah, that's true. It was a great competition. I, all the other finalists did a fantastic job, but I'm so happy I get to um, compete in the nationals. And there's one from every state, so that'll be exciting. Two weeks time. And so was it like a sort of like a beauty pageant, like a traditional sort of beauty pageant? Um, it was a little bit that way, but they concentrate a lot more on personality as well. And um, Part of how you styled yourself was a big part of that because I suppose that kind of reflects what the gothic scene is about. It's not just about natural beauty, it's about um, how you present yourself. And so, what will you do if you win? Um, I'll probably spend a fair few weeks moaning about it. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not one for modesty at all, um, but I'll, I'll probably be really surprised if I do. But even if I don't win, I'm going to have a ball just doing it. So I'm here in Cabaret Nocturne with the founder, Tom, and his partner in crime, Jerry. So Tom, how did you come up with the idea of, of, of setting up a night like this? Like, what inspired you? What was the motivation? Shit music. 
shit music in Squadron. Okay. Um, what kind of shit music? The kind of shit music that was being played in other clubs. Uh, yeah. It was, um, well, it was about the time that industrial and EBM, a lot of electronic music was very popular. And um, I didn't really like it. So I thought, well, well I had a, an, an opportunity fell into my lap to, um, to start a night. And I thought, well, maybe this is a chance to start playing stuff that's, you know, more accessible or not so much beat, not so much electronic stuff. And then, yeah, at some point, yeah, I had a brilliant idea to start running a golf night. So I had to learn what golf music was. Got me some Van House, got me some Sisters of Mercy, got me some Susie, some Cure, and uh, suddenly, BAM! I'm a DJ! Even better, I'm a promoter! So what's the, I know the night's been running now, it's nine, it's nine, it's nine, it's nine. What's been the, the best thing about, about running this night? Three drinks. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, what's your DJ style? Uh, I'm a, a jug of all trades master of none really. I'll, 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 uh, I, I like a very, very uh, wide range of music. So I'll, I'll basically play anywhere that will let me play. I'll play whatever, whatever's appropriate. A bit of a... Bit of a uh, it's a horror when it comes to DJing. So, um, is it true that people who are like goths get depressed? Or is that a bit of a stereotype? Six one half dozen of the other. All that stuff. Um, all that angsty, pain ridden music has to come from somewhere. I think it's a bit of a chicken and egg thing, I think. I, I, most of the people who, that I know and that have come here are pretty positive attitude and you know, they love life and they, you know, they have fun. But, you know, something, it's, it's, a, it's a lugubrious scene in the music and the, and the, and the look, so it does attract people who, who may be a little bit depressed. And, and you know, uh, and it's, it's somewhere where they can come and they're not going to be judged. So, yeah, there may be a slightly higher incidence, but I don't think it, it's, a, it's a cause and effect thing. But, yeah, I think it's, it, it has a draw to it you know, that, that appeals to people who may be a little less, um, a little less perky. I think the goth scene attracts people who are prone to thinking. Okay. And uh, thinking too much. Maybe, maybe from the outside, that's easy to confuse with depression. So would you say it's an aggressive scene? Absolutely not. No, very passive. In fact, every venue we've ever gone to, um, management are always really happy because they have to spend less on hiring security, they can put on less security guards, they just don't need them. I think in 10 years we've had maybe two or three incidents where security had to step in, and that's, that's a pretty good track record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, oh, finally, you're leaving this venue. At the moment we're actually in um, Banana Alley, um, but tonight's the last night, is that right? It is, at this venue. But uh, certainly, certainly not the last night of Cameron Office. Okay, so where are you moving to? So if people want to come and find you, where will they find you? We're moving to uh, a venue called The Bottom End, which is an interesting name. Starting May 4th. Uh, yeah, Friday May 4th, in between um, Collins and Spencer. No, that's not right. King and Spencer. King and Spencer on Little Collins Street. Has three dance floors. Um, has a bar stop with Liquid Madness. Has, uh, has a Johnny Disco. We will be having, we can reveal an exclusive for you guys, we will be having DJs in the bathrooms. Yes. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, if, you, if, you've ever, um, if you've ever wanted to dance on the toilet, there's your chance because this venue will have DJs in the bathrooms. Excellent. So I'm here with Gothic Prince Ken down at Cabaret Nocturne. So, Gothic Prince Ken, yeah. you're an international recording artist. That's right. What do you record? Mainly industrial, electronic music. And how long have you been producing those sort of sounds? Over seven years, I would say. Yes. And, and what do you use to produce your music? MIDI controller, um, keyboard, guitar, and vocal. And so when you were growing up, like during your childhood, 
What were your musical influences then? What sort of music did your family listen to? Well, I'm classically trained. My favourite composer is Johann Sebastian Bach. And his composition, it is the essence of the height of the human emotion. And that's what I'm trying to sort of evoke with the contemporary music scene. And so coming to Cabaret Nocturne, what, what for you makes a good night out? What else? Sex, drugs and industrial. This is how I roll. <laughs> <laughs> Firefly. Where did you get a name like that? Well, I've always liked the name Phoenix, and then I'm a fiery personality, so I'm like, Firefly fits. But you're not a cat woman. <laughs> and so, are you a regular here? Yeah, I like to think so. And so, I'm here with Jenny. Now, Jenny is the grandmother of Goth. How amazing is that? So, Jenny, how did you earn that title? Um, I was having my 50th birthday not too long ago and a lot of the kids, once they found out how old I was, some of them call me Grand, most of them just know me as Jenny though. And I love this crowd, they're not ageist, they're not racist, they're not sexist, they don't judge, they love everyone. So Patty, now do you identify with being goth? No, not really. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm pretty much a mixture of everything. I, I pick up whatever's on the floor and wear it, pretty much. How did you first get into Cabaret Nocturne? Well, um, my friend Jerry, yeah, he told me about it and I, I was like, oh, this is cool, I'll come along. I really love it too. Like, it's one of the best clubs I've ever been to as well. So, Charmaine, now, um, how many times have you been to Club Cabaret Nocturne? Well, this is actually my second time, actually. But um, I really love it here. It's really different from all the other clubs I've been to. But yeah, nice atmosphere, really good crowd. So I love it here. Yeah, I love it. So what have we learned tonight from Melbourne subculture, the land of the goth? Well, I think at Cabaret Nocturne, it's certainly shown us that it's definitely not all about black and white. There's a lot of colors here. It's a little bit sexy and it's definitely non-judgmental. This is Lady Erica about to step out onto the dance floor for Maha's alternative reality. He's a world-renowned performance artist. You may have heard of him suspending himself by hooks. He's also growing a fake ear on his arm right now. Ear, ear. Let's check it out.
Hi. We're here with Stellark. Pleased to meet you, Stellark. Hi there. Thanks for coming <laughs> on our show. Thanks. Really appreciate it, taking time off from your international schedule. And uh, you're ba actually based overseas now, aren't you? Um, well, I'm three months in London, but uh, still have a home in Melbourne. Uh, but recently just got back from the US. So yeah, I'm about nine months out of Australia now. Okay, so what do you call yourself in terms of what you do? What would be the, the label you would use? Yeah, oh, uh, a performance artist, um, although a lot of the performances involve uh, installations. Um, for example, this sculpture was part of the Lawn uh, Sculpture 2011. Uh, so it was exhibited as a sculptural piece, but I also did a performance um, lying on, on the sculpture. So um, it was really the reason that prompted the, 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 um, the suspension performance. Um, so the suspension uh, above this ear on arm sculpture was not so much um, a looping back to a previous suspension strategy, but rather a looking forward to this ear on arm project which is uh, you know still uh, in progress. So you did a suspension right here in this gallery hanging from those rafters? Yeah we had a, a winch system leading to the steel girder up top um, and uh, I lay on on the sculpture spread eagled around the ear. The insertions were done uh, with uh, large shark hooks into the skin. There were 16 of them. Uh, while I was lying on the sculpture, my head in between the, um, the, 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 the palm of the hand there. And then when everything was ready, uh, the body was winched up, only about 50 centimetres above the ear, because I wanted to have this kind of visual connection between the sculpture and the body. And it was really sort of this seduction of, um, of, of a counterpoint in, in scale. So the, the physical body uh, suspended above a large fragment of a body which was this ear on arm sculpture <laughs> and, and actually the body uh, was spinning unaided first in one direction and then in another direction for about 15 minutes and when the body stopped spinning the body was lowered down and uh, I finished up uh, landing on the, on the sculpture again. And I noticed you talk about your body in the third person, the body, is that, does that feed into your philosophy about the way you uh, perceive your body or the human body per se? Um, well, I, I guess, you know, as a performance artist, it gets pretty boring if you're talking about, you know, yourself as I did this and I did that. And, but, but, but more seriously, um, I've always seen the body as a kind of evolutionary object, uh, as a kind of a an evolutionary architecture rather than a site for the psyche or for social inscription. So for me what, what's important is not this individual but rather this bodily architecture that makes it possible for us to perceive and operate in the world and become aware in the world. I think we're all, in, 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 in some sense, um, you know, a kind of a hybridisation of meat, metal and code. Um, I mean, we sometimes function as purely biological bodies, more often as bodies uh, uh, augmented by instruments and machines, but we also have to manage data in virtual systems, so this kind of a hybrid extended operational system where we're no longer contained within the skin of our bodies. We can perform remotely and wirelessly on the internet. Um, so this body is not any longer the body that you see uh, acting only in the local space that it stands in. Okay, Stellax, so you've kindly offered to show us your uh third year today? Well it's uh, it's still uh, um, 
a work in progress. It's a, it's a relief of an ear. So if you see it now, um, we still have to lift the uh, helix uh, to create an ear flap. And then this year it's already been confirmed we're going to grow a soft earlobe uh, using my adult stem cells. So uh, we're going to sort of extract tissue from my body. We're going to from the bone marrow that comes the stem cells. No, no. Tissue. Extract some tissue from my body. Uh, filter out the stem cells. Replicate the stem cells in vitro. Re-inject them in vivo uh, with growth factors. And so we're going to sort of grow um, a soft a soft earlobe. Um, and so when it's a more three-dimensional ear then we're going to reinsert the small microphone um, and connect it to a wireless transmitter in any Wi-Fi hotspot uh, the ear becomes internet enabled. Am I allowed to touch it? Is sure, okay? sure, you can grab it. <laughs> That's well. it, feels like an ear. it feels like an ear. <laughs> <laughs> so the purpose uh, of the ear is, is that it's a it's a living ongoing installation as part of the body which fits in with your whole kind of artistic philosophy I suppose this is just the next step in your evol artistic evolution um yeah I really don't think of it as steps because um, my projects and performances are constantly oscillating between the biological the 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 the, the, the electronic and, and, and the virtual. I mean, I've been performing in Second Life recently. Um, I'm really interested in, in virtualization and, and, and um, how the body can perform you know, as its avatar in online, in online interactive space. What about the ear? Does that shock and outrage people in general or is it...? Well, not, not really. I mean, I think people, I mean, generally, People, younger people are fascinated with the possibilities and I think any project that's a combination of robotics, the internet and, and surgical, you know, surgical kind of intervention is, is going to be interesting to people. Thank you very much for your time, Stella. Thank you. Thanks. And um, I hope people find this as fascinating at home. Thank you. You've been here with Mars Alternative Reality. That's all we have. Hope you were electrified. If you want to learn more or see more, check out our Facebook page or YouTube channel. And remember, let your freak flag fly!